will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Hello, everyone. This is Monica Dennington. Welcome to your Sunday morning service. We're broadcasting to you live from the desert of Phoenix, Arizona, as we come together to learn how to have church in the end times. Today's message, which you will find at monicadennington.com, Com, is once saved, always saved, the final word. The scripture I just read to you establishes that Jesus, who has told us that he is coming to rule on the earth, that is the Messiah that was promised in this prophecy, that he is going to settle disputes for many nations and he will cause them to beat their swords into plowshares. So before we can expect to see this kind of peace on earth, as we all sing about at Christmas time, we first have to have confidence that God can bring this kind of peace to his own people to the body of Christ. And so once saved, always saved is going to be a good illustration of how the final judgment or word of God as written in the Bible is going to settle our disputes. It's a very controversial subject, a very controversial uh, doctrine. Many people would have you believe that these, uh, these two opinions that are warring over this doctrine, that nobody can say um, that there is any final word. That's not what scripture says. It says that Jesus will have the final word. He will judge between the nations and he will judge his own house. So we're going to let him do that today by going to his word and letting the scriptures have the final word. So that's going to be very interesting for you. Be sure to share that on your pages and uh, to spread the word of God because it does change lives. That's one way that you can reach people with Jesus because the word says that Jesus is the word of God. So today you're going to go over to monicadennington.com. Do that right now in another browser. This is where you're going to have church with us by using your three buttons. Use all three of them, prayer, donate, and decision. I want to hear your prayer requests. We'll pray for them when we get them as well as live on the air. Um, you know, if you send them in right now, you can do it on the text chat and I'll pray for you now. Otherwise, we'll get to that next week. Um, the donate button is where you give tithes and offerings. However God moves you to give, that's how God wants you to give. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver and that we are to share all good things and that we are to give our offerings to the people that are working for the gospel and providing uh, Bible teaching for us, okay, and, uh, and spiritual guidance for us. So if you come here for that, then this is a place that you can give uh, your tithes and offerings. So give according to what the Holy Spirit tells you to give. Give generously as an act of worship to your God. And remember that God has promised that he will supply all of your needs every day. Thank you for joining us in the work of the Lord as you hit the donate button. The decision button is the most important button you can hit today. Even if you've never hit that button before, I want you to resolve that today you are going to use it because God's word is going to make a change in your heart. It is going to move you. It's going to inspire you. And that should move us towards obedience in some area in our lives. When that happens, I want you to make a clear decision that says, I am going to turn away from the way I've been doing things and I'm going to change my mind to conform to Christ. Make that decision uh, more, uh, more real, more tangible by sharing it with us, okay, on that decision button. We'll also have the chance to learn your name if we don't know it already and to pray for you, okay? So hit the decision button today. We've got a few prayer requests here. Uh, first of all, we want to pray for Angie Joy today. Angie Joy says, I've been a stay-at-home mom for the past few years. My daughter's almost three, and now I'm a single mom who needs a job, a Christian school for my little one, and a place to live in the near future, and the strength to do it all. Oh, and a good church home. So if you could please agree in prayer for those things, I appreciate it. Let's all go to the Lord on behalf of our sister Angie Joy. Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us access to the very throne room of God. You said that we can approach you boldly, not with arrogance based upon our own righteousness, but in trusting in the mercy 
that we've received through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, the sacrifice that he made to pay the penalty for our sins. We thank you for loving us enough to pay the price for us. And Father, we know that you hear our prayers. We lift up our sister Angie Joy right now, and we ask that you provide for her abundantly everything that she needs. We pray that you would bless her and her three-year-old. We pray that you would give her the strength for the next leg of her journey where she needs to be provided with a job, a good Christian school uh, for her child, a fellowship of believers that, uh, you know, she can get involved with, that she can serve with, that she can fellowship with, um, and uh, that can help to encourage her in obedience to the word of God. Um, And uh, Lord God, I just pray that you would bless her in every way. Give her a place to live that is nice, that is clean, that is acceptable to her and, uh, and to her daughter that is for them, um, a beautiful and clean place where they can worship you. And I pray that you would, um, that in the very near future, that Angie Joy would be able to give a praise report of how you have provided all of these things abundantly for her, um, miraculously according to your power. And in that, I pray that she would have a revelation of the depth of your love and faithfulness towards her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now I want to pray for my dear friend, Aloha. I love you, Aloha. She has an unspoken prayer request. So we're going to pray for her. Father in heaven, I know how much you love Aloha. Well, I don't know how much because the depths of your love for her are so great. But I know it's a lot. I know she has a very special place in your heart as she does in ours because of her sweet spirit, Lord God, and her humility and her great love for you. Whatever she is asking right now in this unspoken prayer request, I pray that you would provide it immediately, abundantly. I pray that you would speak clearly to her that she has such great favor with you. Move powerfully on her behalf to do whatever it is that she is asking you to do in, uh, according to your will and in your name. Thank you, Lord, for moving quickly on Aloha's behalf. And I pray that you would bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, Loa. And then we're going to pray for Jana. <clears throat> Jana um, went to the ER this week. She's had some chest pain, wheezing, asthma, um, some other issues. So um, we want to pray for her. She's also currently pregnant. So we want to pray for the health of her baby. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for Jana. Thank you for blessing her with this child. And I pray that you would see her through to the end of this pregnancy uh, and deliver a healthy child, Lord God. Um, Let her be healthy throughout this pregnancy. I pray that whatever issues she has, um, including asthma um, and whatever's causing these other symptoms, that you would heal that at the root. Whatever's causing the symptoms, heal it right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed, Jana. We speak life to your body in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we ask you um, that, of course, immediately the symptoms would also go away and that at the end of the day, she would have her health and that she would hold in her arms a healthy child as you have given her this blessing. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We have uh, Virgio um, who wants to pray for Stephen to be saved and delivered and for the mighty hand of God to touch him and launch him into his calling. Let's pray. Father in heaven, please bless Virgio. As she comes before you with this request for her brother, Stephen, Lord God, that you would save and deliver Stephen, that you would give him a revelation of the spirit of wisdom so that he can understand the heights and the depths of your love for him and that that love can be ignited as he looks to his king, his pioneer, Jesus Christ. And he has a revelation of Christ on the cross and what that means to him. As he gets that deep down understanding, I pray that it would ignite that flame in him, that he would go out and do the same thing Jesus did, that he would sacrifice himself and um, and serve others. And so I pray that you would launch him into that calling, Lord God, and uh, give him a pure heart, Lord God, change his heart, give him a pure heart and cause him to be born again and uh, cause them to be filled with the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have one more prayer request. Um, We have a dear family in Kansas City. Um, We want to praise the Lord today because uh, he protected them yesterday in a very nasty uh, car accident. And it turns out that all of them are okay. And it is very clear that there was divine intervention. So we want to thank God for protecting um, our dear little Emma and Zoe and um, also their grandmother, Marty. 
we're so grateful. We're so grateful to God. And um, we know that the angels were there. We know that God loves them so much as there was um, all kinds of damage all around them. And inexplicably, there was no damage to them. So we want to thank God for putting his shield of protection over them and that they would know how much he loves them. Father in heaven, we thank you for your faithful protection. We thank you so much for these precious lives. And every day, Lord God, is a gift. We know that. But these, these incidents remind us of a couple of things. First of all, that we should not take each other for granted because we don't know how much time we have on this planet. In this case, also, it reminds us that your supernatural protection is with those who love you. And I thank you for your faithfulness in following that van around day after day after day. And how many times have you protected them that we never will know about? But this time we do know because everything, all the damage, all the glass, everything that was all around them, that it wasn't able to touch them. And I thank you so much for your great love for everyone involved. And I pray that this would illustrate to them that you are not a God who is absent, but that you are a God who cares about them and that you know their names and that you have the very hairs on their head numbered. Even when they may not be thinking about you, you are always thinking about them. And I praise you for that. I thank you for your great love for Emma and Zoe and Marty, that you showed that love yesterday. And I pray that that act of protection would get down into their very hearts and that they would see that you are a God who is here and that you love them very, very much. We praise your holy name, Lord God, for miracles. We praise your holy name for sending angels to protect us. And we thank you that we do not have to be afraid of anything because no matter what happens, clearly, you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for praying with me today. Now we're going to go to our scripture reading in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. We're going to continue reading what we started um, at the beginning. This is a prophecy about the Messiah, and it tells you what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back to this earth and he is ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Right now, if you would like to know that you are walking in the light of the Lord, this Messiah, you don't have to wait until he returns. He wants to have a relationship with you right now. If you've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ, or if you used to have a relationship with God and you've fallen away from him, God is inviting you right now to come and walk in the light of the Lord. You can benefit from the wisdom of this Messiah right now. His decrees are in place right now, and he has called you to be one of the people who brings that light to the earth right now. So I invite you right now, if you would like to enter into that relationship today, to say this prayer with me. Father in heaven, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe you has, have chosen him as king to rule over the earth and to bring peace to the earth because he is the only king who came and died for our sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for the punishment for all the things I've done wrong. And I pray that because of that sacrifice, that you would forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. And I say to you right now that I don't want to go that direction anymore. I want to walk in the light of your ways, Lord God. And so now I give myself to you as a living sacrifice, just like Jesus sacrificed himself for me. 
You sacrificed your own son for me. I am now giving myself to you. I commit myself to your ways. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord God. Save my soul. Save me from hell. Save me and deliver me from my sin, my addictions, and all those things that control me because I want you to be in control of my life. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you. I believe your word. So walk with me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer today, it is so important. Share it with us today. The Bible says that you should share that decision. You, can, you should confess Jesus' name before men. It also says that you need to get baptized. You don't need to get baptized into a denomination or a particular church. What you need to do is find another Christian that believes in Jesus and go and have them baptize you. Just find some water and uh, do what the scriptures tell you to do. If you need more help knowing how to do that, you can always write me. So hit that decision button on monicadennington.com and let us share in your joy today. Thank you for joining me. And uh, without further ado, you can go over to monicadennington.com and enjoy today's message. Once saved, always saved. The final word. Mm -hmm.